It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission really is to inspire. Our mission is to empower. And our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of those resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Shantia. Did I get that right? Yes. <laughs> Shantia, who's in the building um, to really talk about college thriver. I mean, making sure the students are able to get into school and they have the funds to stay in the school. But first, let me say hello, Shantia. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Well, we're excited to have you as well. There's a lot of parents that showed up for this. They they looked below and saw, oh, what? She's going to be talking about how to get money to get into college and stay in the college. I'm all for that program, Shay. So they're here. And there's other folks that are grandparents. I'm not a grandparent. My son, uh, Lennox, is only one years old. But, you know, you start thinking about that and putting money away and, and what's going to happen 100 years from now. And so I guess the first question I have, with all the technology that's going on, and every kid seems to be walking around with an iPad or, or an iPhone. I don't know if they carry books anymore. Um, <laughs> why do parents still have to struggle and worry about their kids being prepared to just to get in or into college? Why is that process so still like uh, nerve wracking? Yeah, and that's a fantastic question. And the main um, complaint or concern that we see for parents is, um, the college admissions process is just so competitive. So how do they make sure that their child is actually going to the right college and not just any college? So it's about getting, because as you know, uh, a degree does hold value when you're interviewing with um, careers and the school actually holds value. A lot of people think that you can just go to a tech school or this school, but when it comes to you're competing against other candidates for that job, the name and the title in your concentration actually carries weight. Ah, I believe you whole, whole Harley. And so are parents more worried about picking the right school to get in or the money to get in? I mean, I mean, it's kind of probably unfair for me to rank it number one and two. I went to HBCU, by the way, Morgan State University, by the way. And my sons went to HBCU, St. Augustine. Um, give them a shout out. They got all the freaking money. And also fam. <laughs> Let me stop being funny. Um, but my question to you, what's what's most important now? And is it getting into the right school or having the funds to get into the right school? Or Shay, is not even a comparison. It's both. Yeah, I'm actually so glad you asked that because you can have a 100% paid scholarship go to the wrong school. I've seen students lose their scholarship. I've seen students get kicked out. So I'm going to say the number one is the right school. And that's something you help with. And I can I can respect that. My youngest son, Charles, went to Clark Atlanta University on a full baseball scholarship initially, and he hated it. And he quit. And all of a sudden, I get a call from the coach saying, your son quit. And I called my son. and said, Dad, I always want to go to FAM. But he we had no money to go to FAM. And I told my son, he can go anywhere. His money and my money will take him, right? Um, and uh, so uh, anyway, long story short is that he told me, I said, son, if you go there, it's a full ride. You can figure out graduate school. You know what he told me? It's not about the money, Dad. It's about where I want to yeah. be. So I, I'm glad you're yeah. mentioning that and you're saying that so wholeheartedly. Yeah. Folks are listening and they're leaning forward and saying, Shay, I like the conversation, but who is Shantia? I mean, could you take a moment? Can you <laughs> slow down? Like, who is this person we're talking to? What's her backstory? What was what's yeah. her background? What was the defining moment where she said, you know what? Um, I'm born to do this and I'm going, I'm in to help folks. And she established College Thriver. So I guess the question is, What's your backstory and what was the defining moment that yeah. led you to where you I'll, are now? I'll make it quick because I don't want to be here all day, but I'm a first generation <laughs> graduate student. I'm from a small rural town, Live Oak, Florida. You probably never heard of it. It's on I-10 between Tallahassee and Jacksonville. So um, my school, I think my graduating class had around 200, so very, very small. Um, and I just had a determination to get up out of my small town and become something other than what was there, which was nothing but trees and cows, <laughs> because it was literally nothing. So um, I made the decision to go to Florida A&M University as well for my first two years, because that's where my guidance counselor went. And once I was there in two years, um, my major was elementary um, education. And I was like, what? 
So you're telling me I'm going to school for four years and I'm only going to graduate making around at that time, 35,000 a year to be a teacher. And I immediately withdrew. I said, no, this is not the right path for me. So um, just to fast track my trials and tribulations, I changed majors and colleges over three times and it resulted in $120,000 in student loan debt. After I went through the journey as a student, lo and behold, I've been working in college admissions for the last 10 years where I am now walking students from that initial discovery to getting into college. So I've been doing this for the last 10 years. And so um, really, I realized, wow, I went through this journey 20 years ago and it's still a problem today. And so in 2020, I started building College Thriver. I love it. I love the story. I always like hearing the backstory and how you got started. Let's talk to two group of folks if we can right now. First, let's yeah. talk to the person that has a senior, right? <laughs> They're just starting their senior year. And depending on people are watching this, let's say it's the beginning of the school year and they got to get going, right? And then they, they want to get into school. And what's the first, second or third, maybe three things they can do? And I'm thinking about uh, one of my good friends and someone I've had an honor to work with the last seven years, her son round now is a senior, by the way, and going to Duke Ellington, which is in Washington, D.C., and wants to get into an Ivy League school, right? And so there's just a lot of anxiety there. So I'm curious, uh, talk to two parents. The one, the child is, is hasn't really there, but you have big dreams and hopes for them. That's why they got to come to you. And then the other parent that has a senior that's like, ah, we're so far behind the eight ball. We just, uh, it might be too late. Um, yeah. Take it away. Okay. <clears throat> so the first one you say has big hopes and big dreams. Yeah. I really want to know, is that the child's dream or the parent's dream? Ah. I would really have to challenge that because a lot of parents push the students off to go do what they want them to do. And in that first, um, here's a stat, over 89% of underserved and first generation students drop out by the sophomore year. And that's because they're choosing things that is not a burning deep desire down in to, to pursue. Don't go to college for money. Don't go to college because your parents told you, you have to go to college because you truly wanna make a change in society. And that's what honestly colleges are looking for. As you realize, Recently, this race-based emissions thing is going on where you can no longer consider, oh, I'm black, I'm Hispanic, I'm underserved. They're now wiping that away. So what else is going to help you stand out? Colleges are looking for change makers. Wow. So should they be focused on the SAT scores? Should they be focused on the community service? And again, this is a loaded question, ladies and gentlemen. This is a broad stroke. But I wanted you to kind of hear a little bit of her perspective, right? Um, you know, do I invest the money I have? And um, I know that I've seen it done with my family members as well. We invest in them, take the tests and be ready for the SATs and prepare, prepare, mm -hmm. prepare, prepare. Um, yeah. Or, um, yeah, w what's one thing that we should be doing if, if you're somebody who wants to support the cause? Yeah, so I would say the the first thing is um, find out how we can get them there debt free. <laughs> um, because back to my journey, I was a top performing student, 3.5 GPA. I was a student athlete, but because I had no tools and access to resources, I didn't know that I could qualify for Bright Future Scholarship, which is here in Florida. They pay 100% tuition or 75%. And the only thing I was missing was community service hours. So find out, okay, if my child is going to transition, how can I make this learning experience or this journey a debt free or take out as, as least amount of loans as possible? Because I will tell you the first part of their transition is going to be learning about themselves and what they're truly passionate about. Says so well. Thanks so much. And um, what are your thoughts? And ladies and gentlemen, I'm just, you know, we, she said we can ask any question. We're having a free flowing conversation, which is really cool, by the way. And I'm curious what her view of the world is. She's been doing it for 10 years of the person that says, okay, we're not ready financially. And maybe the student's not ready. And um, what are your thoughts on someone going to a first step, maybe a junior college or something to get ready yeah. before they get in? Does, does, do you work with folks that are transferring? I know one especially is yours is first generation underserved getting yeah, in. Yeah, first but, generation underserved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you say? <laughs> is that is that another route? Is there any benefit of being able to go there and then try to get a higher score or grades or whatever and then transfer? Take a moment and talk about that that process. And does it save money and headaches for everybody? Yeah. 
You know, and I'm so glad you asked that because a lot of kids, they want to be cool and they want to be in the mix. And so they think that, oh, if I go to a university or if I, honestly, sometimes going to a community college is the best first step because it shows that you can commit to at least two years. <laughs> and then a lot of community college have what's called like a fast track program where if you complete those two years, you're automatically accepted into some four-year university. So automatically accepted. You don't even have to compete. They have partner schools at community wow. college. Yes. And this and this is something that your company, as you work with parents, tell us a little about how your company works with the college thrive. Is it just working with the students and making sure they're mentally stable? <laughs> or are you working with the parents and just some of the stuff that they do when they get a chance to meet with your uh, with your organization? Take a moment and, and slow down for a moment if we can and tell us, you know, here's what the mission goals and objective of your organization is. And here's the type of folks that you're able to help these days. Yeah. Well, our mission is to provide equal uh, tools and resources to students, no matter your socioeconomic status, which means that just because you go to school in a lower income versus a private versus a charter, each school is giving out their own tools and resources, scholarships to this select um, students because they're in honors. And here at College Diver, we're letting you know what your possibilities are because we want you to reach your potential. So first of all, we're, we're removing barriers because you're not in advanced classes, you're not in this, you're not in book club, you're not in that. And we're saying, what type of future do you want to create for yourself? Here are the tools and resources and let us help you get there. So our goal is to show students the potential no matter where they're starting at, like meet them where they are. I like it. No matter where they are, it's something that you can do for them. Then do you also go visit these schools? Do you have relationships with colleges or mission offices? Or is this something that you're, um, that's not the jam. The jam is make sure the application and, and all the paperwork is in order. Just take a little bit and yeah. kind of explain about the audience with that. Yeah. So we do have partners. Like one of our partners is um, a scholarship organization. And so they bring in about 200 colleges um, in a scholarship fair, College Thriver is there, and guess who's helping walk those students uh, through the process to ensure that when they approach these colleges, because they award scholarships on the spot, that they're getting awarded. But like I told you before, a lot of people are going off to college and they lose them. So we walk them through that first year of um, kind of like transitioning that first year of college. So we were there with them from the beginning into the first year to kind of helping them transition into their college life. And for the extended family like myself that, um, you know, I might have a nieces and nephews that are they're going through the process, 10th, 9th, 10th grade. Um, yes. Any, any recommendations you have for us? Yeah, join College Thriver. So it's free ah. for parents and students. Um, go ahead and get signed up. You can sign up on our website at college-thriver.org. We actually get paid through youth organizations like Boys and Girls Club, Junior Achievement, all those organizations who are um, career preparation organizations, and we get paid from the schools. So um, right now we're doing free for parents, free for students. However, I have heard from some parents that they're willing to even pay like nine ninety nine a month just because they they want to take this burden off of their hands to be able to kind of help these uh, help their students get to the next level. And of course, it's way cheaper than an average um, educational consultant is around thirty five hundred to just help. Uh, your child walk through that process. So first step is join College Starver, get connected with College Starver. We had a, a ton of resources. We're actually bringing in um, people that want to offer internships. So it's going to be a single source platform by the time we get done building it out to its full potential. What do you enjoy most about what you're doing these days? You seem to be having a lot of fun. Uh, what do you enjoy about it? <laughs> Um, to be honest, um, when I was 17 years old, I had someone very close to me tell me I would never be anything in life. And I enjoy most to know that um, these students have been told the same thing, that because of their background or their obstacles or their challenges, they won't be anything in life. And um, that is just my joy and the most grateful part of this opportunity to show them they can be what God has created them to become. As an entrepreneur, what's been one of your biggest challenges, just, just as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I would say the biggest challenge as an entrepreneur is I am a solo founder, so not really having anyone to vent <laughs> and share those trials and tribulations. Um, so I would say 
definitely get you a tribe. I'm in some accelerated programs where I'm connected with other women, but I would say doing it solo, man, it, it definitely can be a lonely, lonely journey, but I know I've been called and created to, to bring this to life. Yeah, but you seem to be having a lot of fun at it and you also seem <laughs> to have a lot of successes. What's, what's one or two of the successes that you've had of, of a student that's gone through uh, college thriver. Someone has listened and said, hey, Shay, can you, can you share maybe a story of a success story of where a student was and they joined college thriver and where are they today? She's been doing this for 10 years. Let her, let her, yeah. let her brag a little bit. We want to hear because, you know, they're going to be trusting their, yeah. their kids or their loved ones or someone they care very, very much about uh, inside the college thriver. So you mind sharing one of those stories? Yeah. yeah. So before I share one student's success, I actually want to share a success as a business owner because I am a minority um, led uh, ed tech. So ed tech is a crowded space. Um, but successfully to date, I've raised $125,000 in funding from angel investors, accelerator programs, pitch competitions. Um, so I am resilient, I'm passionate, and I am, you know, like I said, been chosen to create this. So just kind of want to brag on that. But for a student, um, last year, um, I did have a student come to me and um, the child had received a 50% football scholarship and they just needed like about 10 to 15,000 more funding to be able to cover 100% of a four year education guys. So they joined College Driver. We worked with them over six to eight months and we were able to leverage our corporate partnerships um, to help sponsor that child to get the rest of that tuition. So if that's not leveraging your relationships, I don't know what it is. Man, congratulations. You're making uh, dreams come true you truly impact yeah. in the world. I mean, you know, anytime someone's educated and they go through that college experience, um, it, it's just amazing. And you can make that a path for them and make it so much easier. Thank you so much for yeah. all you do. You know, one of my favorite questions to ask, we have a segment here called today is my January 1st. Now, today is my January 1st. For those folks who tune in every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know what we're about to do. So you can go ahead and say those words now. Today <laughs> is my January 1st. Just release today's my January 1st. And for those today's folks that are tuning for the very first time, I want to know what's going on. Well, first, let's welcome you to the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We want you to be part of the family. We want you to tune back in. Please subscribe. Follow us over at Instagram or whatever your jam is over at I am Shay Brown. But share this message. Pay it forward. But today is our January 1st. Represents one of our personal mantras. It represents a fresh start. It represents a do-over. It means the past. No matter what the past is back there, it no longer equals the future. So my question to Shantia on the other side is when you hear those words, today is my January 1st. What do you hear? And what was the time there was a setback for you? There was a challenge. And how were you able to bounce back from it? Yeah, so I would say our biggest challenge has been, man, three years in development for building a mobile app on iOS and Android and I wanted to release this three years ago. So that's been challenging um, as I learn the ropes of technology, as I learn, oh, it's not about how fast you can build a product, it's about building a quality product. Um, as I learned that these students are gonna want their data secure, they're gonna be looking for uh, specific tools and features. And so I would say that's my biggest area of learning and to release um, because I've had to hire over five different software developers in each time. And I've spent like 30,000 in funding in each time um, they couldn't deliver. So that would be a great way to start over for my January 1st to say, okay, now I know exactly what I'm looking for. You don't have to build fast. You can build slower and you can release simple things. Like, I don't know if you guys know how Airbnb started, but their website was hideous when they first started and now look where they're at. So. Those are the biggest things is like, I wanted to roll out with the Rolls Royce of College Thriver. And unfortunately, if you don't have any user interviews and testing, like right now we have about 80 students testing the platform to give us feedback. That's when you wanna build that perfect product is after someone has seen it and they say, yes, I'll buy it. Yes, I'll love it. I was wanting to build the, the red carpet of product before I even showed it to anyone, so. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being so authentic with us, by the way. Um, one of my favorite segments as well is a, they ask the question, what's one of the best pieces of advice you've ever been given, right? And we always frame the conversation around the idea that you've had so many mentors along this journey of life. Some you've met, some you may never have met. So maybe you just read and watched their videos, 
But of all the mentors you've had, if you could reach out and grab one idea that you've learned from them that's still near and dear to your heart, what's the one lesson you've learned and how you made it applied in your own life? That is such a good one. I would have to say the best lesson that I've been taught or told is um, to take others with you and open doors um, because you can pull someone else forward. So sometimes we get up in those five figures, six figures, <laughs> seven figures, and you're walking on holy water. No, there's only one that's holy. So I would say the biggest um, piece of advice is be sure to bring someone forward with you. Now, of course, they must want to come willingly. <laughs> so we're not forcing people along, but open doors for others as doors open for you. Ah, I love it. Well, first, let me let me say thank you so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. But before we close out, what do you do for fun? Like when you're not out helping college students, when you're not out trying to save the world and get people into these colleges and so forth, what do you do for fun? Yes, my love language is travel. I've been to on 14 different cruises. I've traveled to about 10 different countries. Um, so yeah, my love language is definitely travel. <laughs> now you can't leave us hanging. You've been to 10 different countries. We want to know what's one of the favorite countries. Of course, it's hard to say, but what's one of the countries you love going to? You've been on 14 cruises. Down, so easy, some of those cruises well. have the same routes. So I like to believe you've been on some of the same stuff, but what's what's one of them that you really enjoy? Just I'm just curious. We're just yeah. nosy right now. My um, all-time best favorite vacation was Dubai. If you ever get the opportunity to go visit Dubai, it's going to transform your mindset. There's no homelessness there. There's no poverty in Dubai. My mind was blown away. Wow. I've never been to Dubai. It's one of the places I haven't been to, but I keep hearing over and over again, you've got to experience it, Shay. You've your, got to experience it. Yes. Wow. <laughs> well, thanks. First of all, thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Uh, as we come down to home stretch, please take a moment and let folks know what type of clients does your company work with today? And so if you take it on in with you, I'm sure you are from our conversation. And then number two, how can people best connect with you? How can they stay in this conversation and connect with you or your organization so that they can use your services in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So we love to work with education consultants who are maybe doing college and career readiness prep services on their own, scholarship consultants. We also work with schools, so K-12 charter, um, and youth organizations, as I mentioned before, that have college and career readiness um, outcomes. And you are looking for tech tools. You're looking for innovative ways to engage that Gen Z population. Um, college Cyber is a great fit for you. And then the best way to connect with us, social media, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn, as well as if you would like to book a demo to see if College Cyber is right for your organization or your school, just go to www.college-thriver.org and book that demo, and we will be happy to show you the product. Well, thank you again for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a great night. And thank you. Thank you to the viewer. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you. Without you, there is no show. Look forward to seeing you at the next Happy Entrepreneur episode. And I'd love to share as we close out in the evening, every night, that you are so fabulous. You're truly just incredible. That as you are right now, the person that you are, no matter all the things that's going on in your world and your life, that you're still awesome. You're still amazing. You're still incredible. And for you, your future is very bright. So people need to put their sunglasses on. Ha! <laughs> Because for you, your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. With that being said, my name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless. And we wish you success. We out of here. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. So long, Shatia. We'll see you later. Peace, everybody. Bye.